everyone, and welcome to Stepping Out, a nature series created by the Ames Free Library. I'm Lorraine Rubinacci, your naturalist on these outings. Today's topic is early bloomers, those plants that bloom in early spring. Like most people, I enjoy the spring bulbs planted around my house and neighborhood, but there are many beautiful and interesting native plants that are blooming all around us. Let's take a look at three of them. Today I'm in Hansen, in a place where millions of flowers are now in bloom. Where? Right behind me, on red maple trees. No fair, you say. Those aren't real flowers, but of course they are, and they are beautiful. Let's take a closer look. The young tree behind me doesn't reflect the full glory of red maples, but it is at eye level. Almost all the trees across this abandoned cranberry bog are also red maples, and they are in full bloom. Here's an individual tree, and here's what the treetops look like. There are so many flowers in bloom that they give the forest a rosy glow. Now red maples are very well named. The flowers clustered along the branches are red. The fruits called samaras grow in pairs and they are red. And in the autumn, the leaves are red. Red maples are large, versatile trees that grow under many conditions, but are most typically found in wooded swamps. They are, in fact, a major component of Massachusetts' largest freshwater swamp, the Hockamock. When you look closer, you'll see that these flowers aren't all alike. Uh, which reminds me, I strongly recommend that you carry a high quality hand lens like this one to help you appreciate life on a smaller scale. Hold it to your eye, bring the object in close enough so that it's in focus and oh and then you can really appreciate the beauty of these small flowers. So most red maple trees have either male or female flowers. This is what botanists call a dioecious species. Here are female flowers with sticky stigmas ready to catch pollen. And here are male flowers with many stamens covered in pollen. And to complicate matters, some red maple trees have both male and female branches. With the help of wind and bees, pollen will be carried to the flower pistils, enabling the trees to produce seeds. Once you learn to recognize the glow of red maples in bloom, they're easy to find. Now you can impress your friends by identifying a tree while traveling down the highway. Our first flowering plant was a tree. Now we're going to take a look at an herbaceous perennial. This is one of my favorite flowers, one that lifts my spirits every year. The skunk cabbage. I'm at a swamp in Pembroke where it is growing all around my feet. These plants have young leaves. Later in the season, the skunk cabbage will form a large leafy rosette that looks similar to rhubarb, but it has bright green skunk scented leaves. Underground, a large rhizome stores nutrients for the plant. Skunk cabbage flowers have an unusual shape. The outer hood, the spathe, is speckled green and purple. It encloses the inner 
club-shaped spadix, which contains first female and then male flower parts. They are the tiny dots that you can see on the surface of the spadix. Because the stigmas and stamens mature at different times, the flower cannot self-pollinate. This plant requires the help of insects to move its pollen from one plant to another. It attracts these pollinators, mostly fly species, by producing a distinctive odor. When I was at a skunk cabbage site last week, I observed a stonefly, a stream breeding insect crawling out of a skunk cabbage spathe. Maybe it was carrying some pollen. Now I've read that snails and slugs and even bears eat skunk cabbage. Here's one that I found that looks as if someone took a bite out of the spadix. What do you think happened? Every observation leads to new questions. Skunk cabbage flowers appear in very early spring or even late winter. Amazingly, the flowers can produce heat which melts snow on their way up out of the ground. When you visit the skunk cabbage, remember to wear boots. They prefer soft, wet soil along streams, at seeps, and in wooded swamps. If you wish to see skunk cabbage flowers, you'd better hurry. Flowering is just one stage in the plant's life, and it passes quickly. Just two weeks ago, my skunk cabbage patch looked like this, but yesterday, only a few flowers remained. Our third plant is a familiar shrub, the pussy willow. When in late winter, its flower buds begin to open, we see those adorable furry structures. But that's just the beginning. Now's the time to see the actual flowers, not just their silken robes. Willows produce a special flower structure called a catkin. It is a slender, often pendulous cluster of tiny flowers that lack petals. In the case of this dioecious shrub, we pay more attention to the male's showy flowers. The mature flowers appear yellow because they are covered in pollen. The female flowers are green and less fluffy. This all leads, of course, to willow fruit. Let's not forget that as much as flowers please humans, their real goal is to create seeds. Pussy willows are pollinated by both wind and insects. Because they flower early and abundantly, they are an important source of pollen and nectar for native bees and for early butterflies like the morning cloak. In fact, willows support a whopping 456 species of butterflies and moths. Their sugary nectar attracts many other species of insects and hungry birds who enjoy an insect dinner. And let's not forget the mammals like beaver and white-tailed deer who consume willow, or humans who derived an important medicine from willows, the painkiller aspirin. So next time you see a bird or a butterfly or any other wildlife in your neighborhood, Thank a willow. Pussy willow is a large shrub. It needs a sunny, moist to wet location along the shores of a river or lake or at wetland margins. If you find one pussy willow, there are likely to be others nearby. It grows rapidly and it spreads by suckers. And like our other early bloomers, 
It flowers before the leaves unfurl. So to summarize, some spring flowers are widely planted and appreciated. But the group of flowering plants known as angiosperms offers so much more. It contains 300,000 known species. It's time to enjoy the rest of them. Thanks for joining Stepping Out. Visit the Ames Free Library's website for more videos. Until next time, here's a final look at our three beautiful flowers.